Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and welcome to another video. Uh, based on last week's video talking about workplace, I thought it would be interesting to talk about the toolkit. What's, what's in the... Your tools! I'm, I mean game development tools, not, not these tools. Intro. Okay, so last time I did a video like this was, I looked it up, 2019. A bunch of things have changed, but a lot of stuff hasn't changed. I'm still um, using pretty much the same kind of tools that I've been using for the last two decades, being an independent game developer full time on a budget. So let's quickly dive into the stuff that's important. Starting, of course, with a PC. Up until a few years ago, I was a Mac user. I still have my MacBook over here. Um, I used it for a decade after using Windows for many years before that, many decades before it. Uh, but I eventually started using a Mac because I was doing a lot of iPhone and iOS development. And for that, you just needed a Mac. I'm slowly moving away from that and focusing more on PC and consoles. And this thing still works and operates so I can do iOS builds on it. That's why I'm really uh, very careful with it. But my day-to-day -day machine is the Acer Inspire. I think it's an Acer Inspire laptop um i bought it a few years ago high end but still like two or three times cheaper than a new macbook and i've been using it ever since with a second monitor on there just a bigger screen because my eyes are getting slightly older as i am getting older so a bigger screen is pretty nice although i don't really use two screens i don't understand people that even have three screens or more one screen is more than enough it's nice having that second screen up there. But if I just could fold the laptop and then it would still operate on this monitor, which for some reason it doesn't, I would gladly just have one monitor and even hide my laptop somewhere underneath the desk. I don't really need that second screen. It's usually just a distraction thing. Most of us will probably be running social media or, or YouTube videos or something on there that doesn't really help productivity. Um, but yeah. Every now and then I have my task stuff on there and work here. So two monitors, okay, I could do it one. I have no understanding for people that need three, sorry. My other hardware is pretty much um, a Logitech keyboard. I think it's the MX100, something along that, I think. And just a Logitech mouse. Um, no expensive stuff because I know these things get used so much uh, as long as they're good. And, and not too expensive, I'm happy with it. I have two um, Eddie or ED or I have two speakers um, just for more sound and music. Um, I enjoy uh, listening to music when I'm working, so I need good music here. And of course, also when playing games or testing games, I mean, I never play games, I test them. And besides that, uh, Xbox controller and, uh, and of course an Ikea desk that can be turned into a standing desk with a little thing that you need to move around. And that's pretty much the hardware. Um, let's talk about a little bit of software. So I don't use game engines like Unity or Unreal. I use a framework that's called libgdx written in Java and it's for Java. Um, mostly because I just like programming. I like writing code and I write code daily in IntelliJ, which is, um, I think most people know IntelliJ and the huge amount of IDEs they create and make. And, it has a lot of option functions I don't really use, but it has a lot of little, little tiny things that I do use, like quickly searching for things and moving around through my code. And my code becomes big every now and then for certain games, like Regulator City is, it's a huge game and finding my way around the code is very important and a key thing to do. So um, IntelliJ is pretty much where I spend most of my day just writing code and of course it's Java. It's pretty cool that you can uh, launch your game to test it and then you can actually, uh, while it's running, you can change code and then reload those classes and, and test them out and things like that just make it very easy. And, and building my games usually takes like 10 seconds or something like that. So it's not a long wait and I can constantly build and iterate and change and uh, without having to wait for engines or other things. Also, um, not a lot of stuff that needs updating. 
I, I'm, I read a lot of game developers using Unity and then Unity comes out with a new update and then it pretty much destroys your older source code or it somehow certain things need changing. Yeah, I don't have those things as much as, as someone who uses Unity, so I'm really happy with that. Um, the reason I'm using Java, I, mean, I could probably do no, a whole nother video on that. I just rolled into Java from old mobile games before iOS and Android. It was all written in Java, J2ME, micro edition. And from there on, Android came onto the market. It could be done in Java and with libgdx, we can now also do that Java and, and then it somehow changes that to iOS code with Voodoo and Magic. So that's pretty cool. I can write in other languages as well, but yeah, don't change something that works for you. And if you're comfortable with it, keep using it. That's always my advice. After IntelliJ, of course, I do all my own pixel art and graphics for my game. So um, GIMP is my tool for that. And there are many other tools out there that might be better for uh, sprite and low resolution pixel art stuff. So make sure to explore those options because uh, GIMP is not for everybody, but it's just, a, it's a cool art program and it can do a lot of stuff. It's not really designed for pixel art, but it can do pixel art, why not? And I've been using it for like almost two decades now, or for a very long time at least, mostly because whatever operating system I use, GIMP will be on it. So uh, that's just, and it's free. Also a very key option, I'm an indie game developer on a budget, tight budget, I'm not gonna pay Adobe every year or every month or whatever subscription models they have these days. GIMP can be freely downloaded and used and I don't need expensive tools. If I can use free tools, I'll use free tools. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the main two tools that I use, um, GIMP and IntelliJ to create my games. And as just explained, I have two monitors set up. Uh, this is my main monitor where I work on. And of course the laptop has its own monitor. Usually I have one or two tools on there on the screen, um, Discord. I consider this part of my business or my company because it's really my way to talk to people that like my games and my videos and, and I get to interact with them and it's also sort of a replacement for workplace colleagues. Yes, Discord members, I'm calling you my workplace colleagues and you're my distraction every now and then because I don't have colleagues, I work alone and this is a lifesaver. You need to have some communication with people here and there. So uh, that's Discord mostly. Uh, the program that's open on my laptop and every now and then that gets replaced with a uh, Trello. So let's dive into Trello. So Trello is my to-do list and there are many, uh, many, 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 many different tools to keep track of your to-do stuff and your task and your bug lists and your release version information and all those things. I just happen to use Trello. Um, it's not entirely free, but I'm using the free version, which has a limit for like 10 boards, but 10 boards per workplace, and you can have multiple workplaces. So there's a lot of room there to keep track of games and progress on projects. Um, so Trello is my tool to go, and it has been for many years now. I just like the simplicity of it, and I'm just, um, I think it all comes down with all these tools. Once you're comfortable with something and you learn to use that and or know how to use it, and there's nothing really better, just different, then stick with that tool. If you don't need to change, don't need to learn new stuff, uh, stick with it. It's much easier and it doesn't waste a lot of time just hopping from tool to tool. There might be better stuff out there that has many more functions, but I probably don't need those functions because I use very little of the functions that even Trello has. I just want to be able to create lists, keep track of what I want to do in a game, what I need to do, the bugs and what I did. And that's, I think, most of my list in, in a very short way. Trello is my to-do list. And then we have a tool that I don't use a lot, but I need sound effects in my games. And every now and then I need to change and tweak sound effects or uh, record my own voice or use other people's voices and then filter them in certain ways. And for that, I use Audacity. Side note here, like a big side note, I'm using an older version of Audacity because at some point last year or two years ago, it changed hands. It was an open source project and it, I think somebody else took over or closed sourced it or something. And they're famous for tracking stuff on people's PC. So uh, the latest version of Audacity is maybe not the best route to go. 
I haven't found a better tool yet. And I don't need a lot from this tool, but I need a way to cut and change and modify sound effects. I haven't found anything else. I honestly haven't been looking around. Uh, of course, Audacity, the version I have is free. Um, I haven't been updating it for obvious reasons that I'm not sure what happened with the latest version. I should look into that and uh, maybe there's already a fork or something, a different version of Audacity that is maintained by other people. Not sure what happened there, but something happened there. So uh, make sure you check out Audacity and understand what's going on and which version you're getting. Important with some of this software. But um, yeah, Audacity for sound effects, it still works for me. So um, yeah. And then we of course need to make sure that source code is safe and we have a backup of all our stuff. I'm using Bitbucket, have been using it for many years. It's pretty much Git or a version of Git. And um, I just like the interface and it always has been free. I think it's now from the same family that Trello belongs to. Um, it's just a good tool and really the use I have for it is that I can keep track of my changes, especially when we're porting games to a Switch or something else. Sirius Lion also has access to these projects so he can uh, see the changes I make in case we run into a weird bug that actually been there on all the versions I can modify and change it or when we needed to change the controls for the switch I just do it on my end for the PC build in those controls and the graphics and the art and the changes in the code then he can take those changes on his end and do it for the switch version. So um, Bitbucket is pretty much where my project live, where I have a backup. Besides that, I also have a network drive downstairs. Every now and then I copy everything on that. I also have all my sound effects libraries there and source code and important stuff. So I always have a local backup. And besides that, I also have a own cloud backup on my own host. So uh, there are backups enough if things really go wrong. If I don't have a backup from something, it's probably very old and doesn't really matter anymore at least uh, i hope that will be the case uh, so far i've never needed it in like two decades of orange pixel i never really lost source code well yeah i lost some source code but that's from games pre-2010 and uh, they wouldn't run on any hardware anyway and they wouldn't be enjoyable on modern hardware so at some point it's okay to lose stuff or just not copy it anymore and forget about it that's pretty much what happened important back up your stuff make sure you have copies of everything so that if something crashes you can still continue because well it's my job it's my business it's my company it's all digital i need to make sure it's still there if something bad happens and i think that's pretty much all the important stuff that i use on a day-to-day -day basis i don't think i forgot anything i hope not um, besides that, of course, um, Orange Pixel is a digital company. I don't have an office building with people running around or anything. Uh, I don't have a storefront or anything. I have a website, which is part of all of this. Um, it's running on WordPress, um, heavily locked down with different uh, methods to make sure that the standard script kiddies and hackings and... If you have a WordPress website, before you know it, people will try to start hacking it with very common methods. Uh, you can lock all that stuff down, just uh, Google stuff. There are a couple of good plugins that will really lock it down and, and a little uh, tiny tricks to do it. If you need any help, let me know and uh, I'll give some information on that. The theme I'm using is heavily modified. I changed a lot because I really wanted specific things on my website. Found a good theme, but all these themes are never what you really need. They are close to what you want and they look good, but they're not what you... There's just always something missing. So I, I learned how to do WordPress coding stuff on the back end and changed a bunch of things so that it now looks pretty cool and, and exactly as I want it. And there are a lot of things that I still want to do, like the support page. There's a lot of information missing here. And I started doing that for Regulated City already for the new characters. Just um, it takes a lot of time and I really need to find time for this or someone who wants to do it. and find some way to pay that person because that's the next problem so um yeah I'm, I'm slowly building up a support like all the games and unlocking tips and tricks and things and of course we have and of course the front page where i post new stuff when i release versions i release uh, new videos and and uh, articles every now and then press releases um 
just try to create an interesting website and a lot of extra page and information here and there. So there's a lot there on the website and now YouTube is not loading these videos, but uh, that happens. Uh, the game page completely changed. It looks a lot like a Steam page, I know, uh, but a lot of people are used to this layout. So why not try to use it for my own website? So um, it all links with little code things so that if I post an update, it will actually show it on that game page. Again, a lot like how Steam does it, but there are no themes for WordPress that do these things. So I had to write a lot of that code and now it does. So pretty happy with all of that. And it's also kind of funny that my website apparently looks so good that every now and then, um, I think it happened twice, not every now and then, two times it happened. Somebody uh, told me I shouldn't be calling myself an indie game developer because this website showed that it was a huge company. Nobody would do this on their own. And it was meant as an insult from that person to me, but I took it like, thanks for thinking that. It's a lot of work and it's good to see that people think it's from a lot more people than just me, because it's just me. I think that's pretty much everything that's in my uh, game developer's toolbox, toolkit. Um, I use DaVinci Resolve to, re to edit these videos. Um, I use OBS to record screens and, and audio and gameplay. I use easygif.com to um, create or turn those little videos or captures into GIF files and then use them on social media or GIF files or G whatever you want to call them. You know, the little animation, those. Um, of course, I have developer kits, uh, Switch, Xbox, PlayStation developer kits lingering around the office. Um, I have security cameras uh, around the office or around the house. Uh, UFI, UFI, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll put it on screen somewhere. Um, it's a great system. These cameras last like, I have to charge them once every six months or so. I also have the doorbell attached to it. So it's a pretty cool system. Uh, if you need security cameras, check those out. They're affordable, they're not cheap, but they're good and they're not weird um, IP cameras because those easily get hacked and then other people will be watching your cameras. Yeah, so um, I think that covers everything. Everything that I wanted to show and tell and talk about and everything that I use on a day-to-day -day base. Um, if you have any questions about stuff, drop them in the comments below. Um, I think I covered everything. So if I missed something or if you really have questions on details or certain things, because I now breeze through a lot of stuff. Um, if you wanna know more about certain things, drop it in the comments below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.